So let's talk about some concepts, um, some things. I, I came up with this idea of biometricity. So when you look at someone when they are moving, you want them, especially with a deadlift or any of the squatting, you want them to have biometricity. What is that? When you align your centers of gravity correctly, you can get down into a full squat and stand up and it, it doesn't feel like anything. You're not fighting a center of gravity that's a little bit out of place. So when I look at someone when they're doing a deadlift or a squat, I can just see when they've got their centers of gravity lined up. And we call that in weightlifting the sweet spot. So when you're able to do a deadlift, where everything is aligned properly, you've hit the sweet spot, you've hit what I call biometricity. I think you, we need to teach patients how to bend using biometricity. Now, when we put each joint to allow it to perform optimally, we're doing it differently than what I see a lot of personal trainers and some physical therapists teaching like in a deadlift where they say, you know, stay in your heels, don't ever let your knees go towards your toes and, and, and kind of do this type of a thing. And the problem that I have with that, regardless of the reason why they're doing it, and it may be at some stage during rehab it, it is appropriate because they may have sore kneecaps, but you need to move them in a different direction once they get beyond that. Because now what you're doing, or what I see is we're now compromising two other joints to save a knee. Now, I don't know if that's smart. We might, like I said, we might need it at a certain point in the rehab, but because now we're putting an excessive strain on the lumbar spine, and it's not in its point of biometricity, and neither are the hips. They're not being used in a position where they're in their most powerful and most efficient. I, I, I think if you, Put yourself in the most efficient position, you're going to reduce the risk of injury, and you're going to produce the most force at the same time. So certainly with my athletes, I'm not teaching them how to do a deadlift by sticking their butts out and not bending at the knee. And the, the simple analogy, when they come in and they say, well, my trainer told me to do it that way. Like, okay. Well, then ask your trainer to stand on first base and try to steal second in that position. Okay, you know, without having to wait in front of you, you can't be balanced. What athlete puts themselves in that position? Did, can anybody think? I mean, I can't think of any athlete who's going to be in this position to do anything. Because you blow on him and he's going to fall over. So why are we training someone to be in that position when they're never going to be in that position? Because when that guy's standing on second, first base, going to steal second, he's going to be right here, getting ready to go. Are his knees over his toes? Oh my God, don't do that. That's crazy. Of course they are. So here we got somebody being trained. Now they're getting all their stabilization muscles, all their other muscles are being trained to be strong in a position they're never going to be in life. The, the fact is, the only time I've ever seen a human move where they do this is when a personal trainer has told them to do it. Because it doesn't happen in real life. Never. And certainly not in sport. If anybody can tell me a sport, will they see that happen, please? Let me know. And one person, when I said that, said, well, what about powder skiing? I don't know if you have any skiers. Have you ever raised a skier? One skier. Even when you ski in powder, you still need to be on your balance point. You don't want to be in the back seat or you're really in trouble. So that didn't work. 